So here we are at the Purcell farm, the bee farm. Getting all ready to suit up. Suited up. I think that's where the bees are. Looks like some bee boxes over there. But we'll see. Usually you smoke the help calm the bees. It masks alarm pheromones when you open the hive up, so it mainly just distracts them while you work. So, All right. I usually burn. I like white pine ones where you give off the burn. Mike's getting su getting suited up, trying. I'm suited up. There you see some bees. So you want us to come around the side a little bit so we're not... Get that on your fingers, the only thing I'll take it off is rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. so. and this is of course a high tool. It's the only real tool you use, but you gotta use it to pry everything apart because they stick everything together. put on okay. a couple weeks ago. It, it was like a final based product. So see if see if we can pull the queen out. I'm not sure if we'll be able to, but I usually start on a frame where there aren't too many bees. So I pull the first frame out. I'm not squishing bees as I'm pulling it out. And there's two deep, so there'd be another set of these on the box below? Yep. Yep. So that's calm there. This is just nectar here that hasn't been capped yet. This is a little bit of capped honey up here. So once they fill the, the comb with nectar, they cap it yep. with a wax? Yeah, it's just a layer, a thin layer of wax, and they know when it's at the right moisture content, they cap it. So. That's cool. So when you start a box with these wooden frames, is the the comb, the honeycomb the comb already in there? So I actually start with a, it's just a thin wax foundation, and it has the imprint. Of the hexa yeah, the hexagonal imprint in it, and then they draw it out. So they'll they'll build that out, mm -hmm. and then fill it in. It's like an easy way to get them going on a frame. Otherwise, they could build cross comb everywhere, and then you wouldn't be able to pull the frames out. Sure. So this is it's all kind of honey, also. Which normally this time of year you want this top box to be as full of honey as possible. So I might 
just I might just dig down into the bottom box here so you can see. How do you see. keep from squishing them? You inevitably always squish some. <laughs> it's you yeah, especially when there are a lot more bees. I think I got, got one there. If you do squish them though, I think they, they let off warm pheromone and you're supposed to kind of smoke the area to mass that otherwise it can rile more bees out. Oh, yeah. So and each box has a queen? Um just this this hive would have one queen. So this these two boxes stacked is considered a hive. Yeah. Okay. And these it's just the just the size of the bees themselves that are in it. These two here are smaller splits that I made later in the summer so they have a quite built up to the same volume as this, but I'm going to try to overwear them like that. So, probably down in here somewhere. And how often do you open them like this? Um, in, in the spring, in early summer, every two weeks I'm down in where the queen is just to see how she's doing, but at this point, if the hive was healthy all summer, we had a good queen to start to produce honey. I usually don't, don't mess with don't mess with anything. Here I do. And then when you're gonna harvest honey, that would be the only other time. Yeah, and my honey supers I'll put um, on the top of the hive. So, uh, so it's easy they, to get to. They like to put their honey above their brood, so that's even easier yet. Mm, that's cool. So that's looks a little different. It's darker. That's a cat mm -hmm. brood. So there's larva underneath all of that. Oh, okay, so that's where the I see, and they're even building some down on the bottom of this frame, huh? Mm-hmm. It's just so there's something called beast. They call it bee space in a hive. It's like it's right around a quarter of an inch. If it's less than that. They like to fill it in with burr comb or propolis to fill in the gap. If it's greater than that, they'll build comb just so they can walk and move around. Okay. It's like they're really efficient with their space. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Hmm. I don't really mind you too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, oh, right underneath. You got, you've got some inside. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Did> here. <laughs> yeah, catch. So this, um, you see these? Some of these cells have a dark orange in them. Mm -hmm. That's pollen that they turn into bee bread. So they they collect the pollen and they mix it with a little bit of nectar and secrete enzymes, and they actually ferment it in it. You can so feel the stable. vibration off of this thing. See these here, they're fanning. They're, See them? They're spreading pheromone through the tip of their abdomen. Oh, yeah, I can feel the vibration <laughs> off of them. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, they're all over my hand doing that same thing. So usually they'll do that to just allow others. Hey, come here. <laughs> Get this guy. <laughs> Is that what they're doing? Signaling the others to yeah to get over there on him. Yeah, probably because some maybe dropped off the frame. But you can you can actually see their tail. They're opening up a little gland on the back of their abdomen, and then they're spreading. Hmm. Here's a close up in the sun. That is a weird feeling.
In search of the queen. She's a killer queen. And she's very recognizable. She's way bigger than the others, is that? Yeah, the, the abdomen's two or three times as big as a worker. It's an interesting thing between a worker and a queen is um, a queen has is fed higher doses of royal jelly when it's in its final stage, and worker bees have been stunted in growth. So a worker bee could have been a queen. The hive just decided for it not to be. So they didn't feed it the yeah, they, royal jelly. It's not. They don't feed it for. They don't feed as much royal jelly for the whole duration until it's capped. But a worker. It's kind of interesting if, if a hive goes queen. Sometimes you'll have a laying worker, which is a worker bee changes its hormones inside and it grows a little bit and it actually will start laying eggs. All these workers can lay eggs, but they've never made it so they'll lay unfertilized eggs. Unfertilized eggs turn into drones. Workers come from fertilized eggs. Hmm. Alright, where's this going to be? See there, go that way. <laughs> so you want to be careful pulling the frames in and out because if you roll it clean anywhere, then mm. it kind of screws. So. so they just kind of move out of the way a little bit. Yeah, a lot of times if you put a little pressure on them, they'll move. Look at all these bees running around now. We, we've disturbed them. <laughs> they won't leave your hand alone, huh? You can't save everyone. I always... These are my friends. I'm bringing them into work tomorrow. <laughs> Pretty heavy now. It, it was maybe a tenth that weight. What, the whole thing? I don't want to go this way. Yeah, you, you, you That's pretty cool. You so you're, um, you put sugar syrup in the jars? Yeah, sugar syrup. And the bees eat that and that gives them energy and nutrients yep. to, to build a hive? So they'll, they'll take that and pack it in cells and then dehydrate it to it's like 15-16% moisture and then cap it as honey but sugar syrup taken in that way technically isn't honey because it's derived from sugar and water which nectar has all the antioxidants and stuff that nectar has so it it's not as good for them but definitely helps just having nothing so that'll be that'll allow them to something to eat and feed on over the winter mm -hmm. so that then spring then they can go out and, and get the nectar and yep. create their own honey and, and that's what you would then harvest. Yep. And they would also, I mean you wouldn't harvest at all, they would have enough right. to, to survive on that way as well. Okay. All summer long mm -hmm. like preparing for winter. <laughs> and they overproduce so right? Oh yeah. How much is, is it? So I on kind of an average good colony, like this, this I obviously didn't take any honey off, but one of my good colonies, I could like, take about 100 pounds off. 100 pounds of honey. Mm -hmm. And they would still have enough yeah. to self-sustain yep. themselves. I think I that hive there that we are just in, I took maybe three supers off of. It's probably close to 100 pounds, and they still have gobs of weight. So that wax with the imprinted hexagonals mm -hmm. or octagonals or whatever they are. Yeah. Yep. They draw it out so the, the nurse bees create wax. They have wax glands on their abdomen. And they produce scales and they take those scales and chew them and manipulate them. Hmm. And then they form stuff. So this was, they had built high or uh, combs between the two boxes 
and that's the sugar water, sugar syrup that, or the, not the true honey, but the. Most likely, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I you just call that burr comb, yellow jacket. Yep. I don't like the yellow jacket. The yellow jacket. So the other interesting thing about drones is they don't have stingers, so they can't hurt you. So that's a drone. Yep. And that's only purpose in life is to mate with the queen. Yep. And then they die. Yeah. And they get kicked out of the hive in the fall because they don't help do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a life. And they make the then they go and make colonies and wait for a queen to show up. Or they'll so they they change at the mercy of the queen. The queen will come out and. Honey. Yeah, it looks like it's in the process of being capped a couple of them here, huh? Mm, that weighs, yeah, that's got decent weight to it. Oh, that's, oh wow, geez. And that's not all the way capped yet. So will this be um, a hive that you use for honey in the spring? Hopefully, yeah, if, they'll, if they can winter over, it should be a thriving colony in the spring. And so then you just do just this, but you take a knife and scrape the cap off and the honey drains right out of it? Yeah, <clears throat> well, this, essentially, yeah, it's what I do to extract honey. This here will, will go for the bees most likely. And in the spring, I'll move them into 10 frame wide boxes. Okay. And then I usually let them fill up a good part of this top deep before I put honey strippers on. But that's, yeah, that's all it is. I just take a hot knife and cut those cappings off. And then I put the honey frame in an extractor. And it, just a centrifuge spins out the honey. Oh, I see. Okay. And then I run it through a cloth filter to filter out any wax particles or bee legs and bottle it. And that's what I bought. Yep. <laughs> That's what you got. And you say it's lighter in the spring? In the, yep, in the spring it's much lighter. And kind of later in the summer it gets darker. I'm not sure why that is. But, and they say the darker honey has more nutritional value. There's more antioxidants too. Yeah, look at that one. It's yeah. just dripping. Yeah. Yeah, what is that moisture on them? So that was honey that was dripping and I cut yeah. open here. Oh, I see, um, okay. So they'll go crazy clean it up. He just gave him a bunch of work to do, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you kind of make them a little inefficient when you open the honey, but... And this just slowly dripped yeah, that sugar water, sugar syrup. It's like a, I just have a bunch of holes and they'll actually go in and just suck it out. Okay. These, this hive was going through three quarts in a day. Really? It was amazing. 